Hello and welcome back. I hope you're enjoying this backpack trip through the road rising. If you're just joining us, I'd encourage you to go back to week one and see exactly what's going on with the pilgrim, known only as friend. Today we want to look at week eight of the series, which is going to cover days 43 to 49. Or if you have the addition of the road rising that follows the calendar, then you'd be looking at February 12th to February 18th. Friend has finally reached the place on the trail called Rendezvous and has been introduced by his new friend, Old Charlie. I chose Rendezvous as the name of the place because, well, it's reminiscent of the gatherings of fur trappers in early American history. For them, it was a time of trading goods and stories and renewing old acquaintances, catching up on the latest news. In the same way, this gathering of pilgrims that Friend has discovered serves as a, well, a safe harbor in the middle of the wilderness, a place where you can stock up on necessities, pick up some new skills, enjoy the fellowship of like minds, and yes, even worship together. If you haven't noticed the analogy yet, think church. It's at rendezvous that Friend learns more about the evil man and his destructive nature. Invited to attend a training session, the pilgrim is looking forward to hearing what the instructor there has to say. Let me read from that account. This is day 46, February 15th. The pilgrim writes, No one had to wake me this morning. I thrust a mug of coffee into Charlie's sleeping bag and headed out the door to find Jonathan, the one who would tell me about the evil man. I had to ask several people in the training area before I finally located his class. They were meeting on a hill overlooking the camp, and as I arrived and found a seat, he was telling the group, Always seek the high ground. Your enemy will try and engage you when you're below him, in a valley a depression in the trail, anywhere he can gain an advantage. His strength is in his power of deception. If he can convince you that you're defeated, he's won the battle. I watched Jonathan as he spoke. He didn't use notes and obviously didn't need them. The strength in his eyes and the scar on his face told me that he spoke from experience. I wanted to speak up, to ask him all the questions that were burning in me. But now, sitting in front of him, I couldn't open my mouth. He seemed to know my thoughts and looked at me, those eyes boring all the way to the secrets of my heart. You've met him, haven't you? he asked. I nodded. How did you feel? Terrified, I whispered. Confused. I felt like, like he knew something I didn't know, and that fact was going to hurt me. Jonathan smiled, but not in a mocking way. That's exactly what he wants you to think. But he didn't touch you, did he? The question startled me. No, but he doesn't have the authority to touch you. Not unless you allow it. Jonathan turned to the group seated around him. Remember this well. The evil man is vicious, but he's been put on a short leash. He cannot lay a hand on you. As he spoke, he placed two fingers along a ragged scar that ran across his cheek. But that doesn't mean you won't get hurt. The evil man's been in this business a long time, and he knows all the tricks. He knows exactly how far he can go, and given the chance, will go all the way to the end of the leash. Breaking for lunch, I walked beside Jonathan as we started down the hill. Rude or not, I had to ask him about the scar on his cheek. Self-inflicted, he said quietly. I thought I had him and was feeling pretty cocky. Suddenly, he was right there in my face. I pulled my weapon up to fend him away and cut myself. He's never let me forget it. And then the pilgrim ends that day's journal entry from this reminder from Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation 
and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night, he has been hurled down. I hope this gives you some encouragement today. When I say be safe, that's not just a wish I have for a pleasant trip. I want you to know that you walk with God who defeated Satan on the cross. He's been flung down and put on a short leash, leaving you the opportunity to enjoy the journey. So enjoy your travels this week. Let's meet farther down the trail. Y'all come back now, here. The pilgrim, who has now become known to all by the name Friend, has set out with new confidence and a greater appreciation for what he's experiencing. During the week, he's come to an old covered bridge and just has to stop and admire the craftsmanship.